Hello there, it's Karen here from Crafty Little Miss K and I have decided to try again. I've been trying to make a video for the last couple of weeks but different things have kept coming up mainly because I lost my voice last week. The week before I was incredibly busy doing other things but yeah, last week I just couldn't speak at all so uh, battled through, went to work, went and visited my dad but you know what, it was just too much. Anyway, so I'm back. The voice is back hopefully to stay. And so we're bringing you Christmas. So these boxes were inspired by uh, some things I saw on Pinterest. I love to collect lots of little ideas for little gifts and stocking fillers and things like that. And I've got my board in front of me, but I can't show it because there's other ideas on there that are for my family. Um, but basically, I saw this box or a similar box to this last year by a demonstrator in America called Candy Ford. And then it popped up again recently by another American demonstrator known as Queen Bee Creations. And um, so I thought, you know what, it's come up twice now, the last two years, the last two Christmases, I'm gonna make some. So if we just pull off the wrap, and that's really just to hold the box in place because it's not too snug, but it just fits nice. So inside we have three Ferrero Rochers with the Ho Ho Ho, hence I decided to change all the snowflakes to a Father Christmas. Um, so yeah, that's using the gold. But I'm going to use the silver foil this time because inside here I don't have Ferrero Rochers. I've got some silver coins, the ones that you kind of put in the tree or put in stockings and things like that. Like chocolate coins, not, not real ones. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so I was making these and I thought, do you know what? I know lots of people who are vegan or vegan, however you want to pronounce it. And so I went into my local um, health shop and I found these. Now these are vegan friendly white chocolate coins. Uh, they're gluten free and dairy free. So I thought, great, that means that people I, who I know who are vegan don't have to miss out. Because it must be awful, you know, gift being gifted chocolate and stuff when you can't really eat it. Anyway, so I've got those coins there. So this is why I went with the Knight of Navy. Um, so I've made a bunch in the red and the black and the gold for the Ferreros, but I've made a couple of these in the silver. So I've actually got some ordinary chocolate coins in silver as well. So what I've done is I've got myself a little Sharpie and just around the edge, I'm just putting a little V just so if the boxes get mixed up, although I'm going to put the person's name underneath, you know, if they get mixed up, they will be able to see that they these ones are actually the vegan ones so I'll just quickly finish that off and then I don't have to worry about coming back and doing it after so I thought that way I won't get confused in who I'm giving them to anyway let's move on so that's that so they're ready now so let's put them off to one side so the pen the ink can dry so yes I've got um, all the pieces cut out ready I've got my ho 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 cut out ready or the anyway the H's part of it because obviously I don't need the um, the circles because I'm not actually cutting into the into the base um, so they're off to one side so anyway so the base of the card measures 11 by 5 and I've worked that out to be 27.9 centimeters by 12.7 and then the insert that's going to sit inside the box will be um, nine and three eighths by three and three eighths which works out to be 23.9 by seven centimeters i hope i've got those measurements right i usually work in inches myself um, the lid of the box is ten and an eighth by four and an eighth uh, which works out to be 26 by 11.5 centimeters the piece of silver foil is eight and a quarter by two which works out to be 21 by 5.7 and then the little bit on top, which I'm going to do some embossing on, is 8 by 2, which is 20.5, I think that's got, I've got it written down next to me, by 5. Hopefully the, the centimetre measurements are approximate, so please do check. So we'll start off with the base, and I'm going to do some scoring first of all. So all you need to do is, on this one, on the base, is on each of the four sides... You want to score at one and three, oh, one and a quarter inches, which is about three centimeters. So let's quickly do that. And then on the insert that goes inside, 
you will uh, score at half an inch, which is 1.3 centimetres. And then the lid is going to be scored at three quarters of an inch on all four sides, which I've got down as two centimetres, so I hope that's correct. Uh, <coughs> all right, so that's that one, so I'll leave off to one side. We'll work on the base first of all. So just I'm going to burnish, score, sort of fold and burnish all those score lines. Okay. Yeah, this cold. I just sort of woke up one day, I felt fine. By about three hours later, I had a really scratchy throat, and then that was it. Just hit me all of a sudden. And the annoying thing was, I was about to go and get my flu jab the next day. <laughs> that didn't work. Okay, so I thought I had some scissors. Yes, I do. One side here. So what I'm going to do now is I always work on the side that's got the bump, you know, where you folded it. So just snip up to that score line. Snip out a wedge. Okay. And the same with this one. What I do is I just cut just to the inside on this base. I will just cut to the inside of the score line and then just to the outside on a slight wedge like that. And then just wedge the outside edge just to make sure it doesn't sit on top. When you fold it up, you don't want it sitting on top. It's not been cut very well just there. My snips don't seem to snip to the end of the blades anymore. I don't know what's going on. Anyway, so I was supposed to be doing another video showing some table favours I've made for on stage last month. But I must have accidentally deleted it off my phone. So I have had somebody contact me asking when I'm going to do that. So I will try and get that done later this week I've got a, an odd day off at the end of the week so I'll try and get it done then now what I do is I will just pop these over and make sure it doesn't sit too high because sometimes my scoring is a little bit off as you can I don't know if you can see that it's just a little bit off so what I'm going to do just get a larger pair of scissors and I'm just going to shave a tiny little piece off like that and all that will do then is make that a bit fit a bit better. That's still not enough. That's it. And then that'll make it a nice clean corner on there. I mean, if you're doing this for a craft fair, you want it to be as perfect as possible. Or even if you're giving it as a gift like I am, you want them to be as perfect as possible. Right, so that's the base. We'll do the top in a moment. So... All I'm going to do now is I'm using wet glue. You can use your tear and tape or if you've got any fast fuse left. I wouldn't use snail or like a tape runner because they tend not to be strong enough. Okay. And then just fold it over make a nice corner there. Just hold for a second. Same on this side. If you've got any glue that pops out, just wipe it off real quick. And that's, I've got a little bit there I need to snip off in a sec. And then grab your bone folder and just really squish down those ends just to make sure that glue is taken. There we go. Now where's that corner? There it is just where it didn't cut very well before that's it lovely and then the insert what I want to do before I glue this down is I want to put the ho 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 on 
see if I'd have been doing the the ones with the red with the Ferrero Rochers I'd have got my um, layering circles I've got the two smallest one two smallest no it's not the two smallest it's size two and three working from the inside it's the second and third one and I'd have cut rings out which I have done on previous ones like this and they would have marked and then you just sort of draw a little pencil line and to show you where and then you use the inside circle just to cut it out to make the hole for the Ferrero to pop to hard to pop into but I didn't actually need that this time and then the H's have just come from the large letter uh, for, um, what are they called? Large letter something or others. You know what I mean. <laughs> Dice. <laughs> um, yeah, I think the cold's still in my head. <laughs> I can't think straight. And then, so I've got those already. Oh, no, that's a gold one. That's from the previous set I was doing. There's some silver ones around some. Oh, they're off to one side, aren't they? Duh. Okay, so what do you want to do? Just roughly work out where you're going to place everything. Like that. So, and then what I'll do is I'll just very quickly add a little bit of glue to the letters. You don't need too much because you want it squashing out underneath. And I've just gone to my pad there, let's get rid of that. And then to make sure that I don't knock everything out though, I'm just going to use some tweezers just to hold it until I'm happy for it. And roughly, so work out sort of equal distance from there and there. And then just press that down. Same with this one. Right, and then what I'll do before I put those on, I'm going to make up the base just so it's not too heavy while I'm gluing it. Give it a pinch to hold it in place. I mean, what you could do if you wanted to is maybe just cut the corners off completely and um, just slide it in there. But I found this way it just gives it a little bit of extra stability because of the weight of the. Okay, so then I'll get a glue dot and my. Spiky tall thing. Just place it in the middle on the back. Work out where the design goes. Again, make sure it's equally sort of between the top and the bottom. pop it in your box so what you could do is which I did do on, on my other ones is layer the H's up on dimensionals so they're actually sitting up a bit as well like the, um, the chocolate coins are but it doesn't matter if you don't um, right so for the lid I'm going to prepare the lid but I'm not going to make it up yet because I want to do the embossing before and get that on there before I actually make the lid up but we can get all the burnishing done and all the cutting done first Okay, so sums before, snip just inside that score line, just outside, and then a little wedge off there, and this end the same. So, right, that's that ready, and then bring this down, and then what I'm going to do is move all this stuff out of the way, so I don't need all that stuff now, and bring in my stamparatus. I'm going to move that completely out of the way. Okay, so I've got my stamp brush. I've got my, my stamps on here already on the plates. I'm using Signs of Santa. I'm using the Father Christmas. And then the words come from... I'm going to knock everything flying now. Let me just... Because I've got a pile of stamps next to me while I've been doing stuff. I've been using the Merry Christmas to all. So I've got the Happy... No, I haven't. I've got the Merry from here. 
and then the Christmas from there. And then the snowflakes have come from the Snow is Glistening, which you can't get anymore because it's only available during uh, November. And I've just used the largest snowflake there. So let's bring everything over here. I don't need my Sharpie now. Right, so like I said, I've got everything ready. And I'm going to do the words first. Let's put a stamp under there just to support it. That's it. Like that. Okay, now underneath here is my silicone mat, which I find helps to raise them up with these with these um, photopolymer stamps. You've got the foam mat here, but when I'm, the magnets are going to be very, very close to the stamp, and I find it doesn't push down properly. So I've got the silicone mat in there just to help add a bit of um, height to it. So let's get my blue piece of card. And of course, when you're embossing, you don't want any fingerprints on it. So always use your embossing buddy, the anti-static bag, whatever you want to call it. Okay, don't want to pat it too much because I did that with the, with the blue one before, the navy one before, and I found it just left it a little bit of a, a cloud. So I'm just rubbing it this time. And then without touching the sides, I have worked out that if I use that Stampin' Up! logo as my guide, I can put that there and that one there, and that will hold it in place. So let's put that one away. I've got a piece of paper handy for when I do the powder. Okay, so Versamark. Let's move that out of the way temporarily. Right. You just see me off the side there, just... Putting some Versamark on the Christmas, press down, and then just to make sure that I've got enough in case it sinks in a little bit, I'm just going to do it again. And because you're using the Stamparatus, that's not going to move at all, and that's just made it nice and wet. The Versamark does stay wet for a while. Let's just move that back a bit so that it doesn't catch on the stamp. That's it. And now I've got the Merry. So I've made about 10 of these so far and I've kept the stamps on there ready for when I did the filming just so that I didn't have to keep on repositioning. Right, take that one off, get this one on ready. He's actually going to go on upside down. I have mentioned before I do tend to do things back to front so you'll see the evidence of that now. So just with, with my fingernail I'm just holding the card so it doesn't move. And then I want Father Christmas on this end, so I'm turning upside down, and this time I'm using the grid lines to hold my card. And I just want to just touch the corner on that one. And then this one, I've got to be careful not to touch the Merry. There we go. So just offer it up. Yeah, he's not touching any of those magnets. And then again, first to mark Father Christmas up with his little list of naughty and nice. Wonder which list I'm on. I like to think I'm on the nice list, but uh, we'll see. Actually, I know I'm on the nice list because my husband's bought me the uh, tote bag from Stamping Up. So there we go. So he's a little bit faded on his little belt there, I can see. So I'm just going to make sure there's enough ink on that so that the embossing powder will sit on it. That's a bit better. Okay, so let's pull that out. Again, using my finger now just to make sure I don't actually touch the card. And then just freehand, I'm just going to grab the snowflake and just do some random snowflakes. I don't think I did that one very well. On the other end, like that. I think that first snowflake, I didn't do it very well, so that might look... Mind you, the bow's going to go there, so it won't, it won't matter too much. Okay, so that one's that, that's that done. Now, let's move this out of the way, because I don't need this anymore sides and bring in my embossing powder and a bit of paper save my work top now I saw somebody give a, a really good tip and I'm just looking for my little embossing pad thing okay got it and they said if you just run your embossing buddy down. I can't remember who it was. I'm so sorry. If, you're, if you happen to see this, you know it was you. Let me know. But they just said, if you use your embossing buddy, 
on your piece of scrap paper it'll stop the, the powder from sticking to that when you try to pour it back into your um, container and I thought that's a clever idea so I'm just going to use loads and loads and loads and loads and loads and then turn it round I can see there's a couple of little fingerprints managed to find their way onto there even if even with my being careful okay so let's give it a little flick let's have a look actually that's not so bad I've just got a little tiny bit just got a little fine brush here it's got a little tiny bit on the edge here so just brush that off have a good look that did come out nice I'm just going to cut that little bit off there I can see there's, there's a little bit of powder on that snowflake so I might have just caught it after all and then pour this back in so let's see if this works yeah apart from where I put my thumbprint that's not bad at all normally I have to sort of take it off to one side shake it I didn't have to do it that time of course I have got it all over my worktop anyway but um, right, let's move that out of the way I'm just going to give oh I just sorry just head butted my camera okay so the next part is just to heat this up so bear with me the noise is going to be you might want to turn your volume down a bit just while I do the heating okay I'm just going to warm it up first I won't talk but I'll just do the embossing and then I'll talk at the end times I've been doing this over the years the heating bossing that never gets old I love watching the magic of that powder melting especially on the snowflakes okay so bring these bits back now yeah, it's cooled off enough so I'm just going to glue it to the silver foil now thing about the wet glue is you can just move it if you need to although I wouldn't move it too much if I were you on the foil because it's a nightmare getting it off the foil if you make a mistake okay so that's that bit done and I've noticed I've got a little tiny bit of silver in there but you know what it's so minute I'm not going to worry too much about it and then stick it to the, the lid of the box Oops, Daisy. What was I saying about too much glue and foil? Let me just I'm probably on my jeans. <laughs> I'm supposed to be going out later, but hey ho. Okay, so let's just move it, that's it. And I do this just to make sure that all that glue has been spread out evenly. Okay, so I'm just going to redo those because I flattened it from the other side. I'm just going to redo those uh, score lines there. That's it. And then it's time to make the box up or the box lid. That's it. Okay, so again. Get a nice corner, pinch and hold. You see my fingers, my hands shaking in a minute because I pinch really tight. Okay, 
and then some oh, that doesn't cut very well. Some people like to make up their lid around the box base. I know by the measurements that this works, so I'm not going to do that. Okay, and lastly, and then as before, just give it a really good old press so the glue gets squished out evenly. And there we are, that's the lid. So let's bring the base back in. So they're not moving because of the glue dots. Pop the lid on, if it's a treat. And then I have got some silver tinsel ribbon. You can use any ribbon that tones with the box because you don't have to do it in the Knight of Navy in the silver like I did. I just chose the silver because of the coins inside. Um, and I think silver and navy looks really stunning anyway. So let's fap about with that bow. There we go. And I don't have to cut any. That uh, piece there was roughly, the other ones I measured, they're about 15 inches uh, long. Don't ask me how much it is in centimetres. Anyway, so there we go. So if I bring the other two boxes back again now, you can see that I have been very busy. I may, I've made some with silk, with gold glimmer as well, which I prefer the black myself. Um, so there we are. Lovely, lovely little gifts, inexpensive gifts that look really nice. Um, and um, I hope you like them. So thank you to those demonstrators who inspired me and showed me the measurements on their Pinterest, on their uh, blog boards. I'll have all the measurements and things on my blog as well, just to, as a reminder. So if you can follow the blog post down below. I'd just like to say a big thank you to the people who have subscribed while I've been um, offline. Yeah, so if you want to join my team, let me know. If you want any of the items, let me know. You can follow those links and things down below how to contact me. Anyway, so um, I'll be back soon with another little project. And... I hope my family doesn't look too long because <laughs> I don't want them seeing everything I'm making. Anyway, bye for now and have a good day.